It's the second morning of the Elephant, Bear and Bull Hundred, and at Budbrook, on the approach to Warwick, weary members of the Long Distance Walkers Association have been enjoying the return of sunlight. Another day is dawn, so we can hope. Yes, it was a good night. A little bit chilly, but not bad at all. How's it going? Suffering a bit. Were you on your own the night? Uh, yeah, most of the time. What? Some of the time, anyway. What's the suffering? Feet. Yeah. Tired. So, uh, none of these are new experiences? No. Nope. No. And you just live with it? Yep. Well, carry on. Good night. Nikki, your son's still leading you astray. Yes. <laughs> but not actually off route. No, 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 hopefully not. No, I think we've done all right. Uh, Are you finding this is testing mother and son relationship? Uh, no. Oh, it's a good opportunity to meet up. And you're smiling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a yep. lovely morning, isn't it? Yeah. Walkers and runners on this 50th LDWA 100 are now spread between five checkpoints, with 30 miles between the leader and the sweepers. The aim is to finish, but those who reach Warwick 55 miles in have the reward of knowing they've qualified for next year's 100 in the north of Scotland. They enter the town across its racecourse and through its medieval west gate. It's going well. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we got through the night. Yeah, yeah. Live, upright. <laughs> and here you are, you've got the, the Warwickshire bear. Yeah. yeah. And ragged staff. Yeah, no, it's all going well. The talk is of breakfast, but that's still eight miles away at Kenilworth. It's in through the west gate and out again through the east gate. You're the greeter, are you? Well, no, I'll just come out for a break and get a bit of fresh air, enjoy the sun. Spaghetti hoops are strictly for children and long distance walkers. It's all about food that will go down easily. How long has he been like that? Oh, at least 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> For the Hickses of Kenilworth, this really is a family adventure. So my wife Sally, my daughter Jennifer, elder daughter Jennifer, they're somewhere almost in Kenilworth by now I think, um, and I'm Richard, um, uh, still stuck here in Warwick. And uh, my other daughter Angela is part of the support crew. I sensibly didn't decide to do the whole thing and just have turned out to eat the snacks and <laughs> vaguely cheer people along. It's Jennifer's boyfriend, who's oh. driving the car. Oh. So, so everybody is in uh, real family effort. Ongoing yep. blister problems mean Kenilworth is now the target. For obvious reasons, since that's where we come from, that, that may be where I pack it in. But uh, wow. yeah, nice, let's, nice let's day for a very slow walk. Blister. Thanks to the heat, Richard is not alone in suffering foot problems. Neil from Northumbria. How many is this going to be if you get there? If I get there, it'll be 30, yeah. 30, yeah. right, so it's a very big, I didn't know that actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how's it going? Well, it's quite hard underfoot. Yes. Um, but the weather's nice. So uh, at least we're motivated by that, which is always a good thing. Yeah, the weather's nice and the scenery's been good. Yes. Oh, I'm up against it now, mate. Oh, yeah? I'm really, uh, really flagging. My calves and bits. I had to walk with the crutches to start. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Oh, crutches. Right, right, oh, the walking poles. We, we call them the sticks, yeah. I, I don't use them to, but I had to borrow them to get out to the last checkpoint because yeah. I could walk. Mm. But I've managed to push through this next stage. Yeah. And I'm hoping to make it to the breakfast point at the moment. But yes. And then see Hard. how you feel, maybe have a shower. Yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as easy 100 as there, I don't think. No. Okay. Climbing Beryl, we've got half the population of Northumbria coming towards us. You have, most certainly. Yeah. All of it now. <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting there, we're still going strong. <laughs> Hello there. Phil Chapman okay, strides easily onwards, doubtless looking forward oh. to eating breakfast and not having to cook it. 
He's still 45 miles from becoming the oldest ever first-time finisher. From Warwick, the route crosses the River Avon at Saxon Mill. There's little time to admire the view. At Kenilworth, local man Dylan has a date with his family. Looking forward to meeting him. Did you like the view of the castle? It's not bad. But there was something you were more interested in. I'm more excited for breakfast, I have to say, than the castle at this point. I'm a very hungry man. This is a big moment for you in your hundred. Yeah, absolutely. Back in the hometown. Hey! Got her quick. My heels are hurting. Okay, you so want to get tried to run and uh, run on like the front two feet instead. Uh, okay, so. where's Harry gone? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's with other people, so he's okay. okay. He's okay. <laughs> are you proud of him? Yeah, very. Yeah, I think he's mad. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Harry Neal, Dylan's friend from Scouts from school, is close behind, happy to be back in the town of his youth. I get to reminisce a little bit. Uh, early Anna. Sunday so morning. Teenage nights hanging around in the fields. Oh yeah, fields, definitely it? sat on this wall here. Sipping tinny, probably when we shouldn't have been. 16, but yeah, it's good fun. And the Kenilworth locals keep coming. Hello, Jen and it's Sally and, oh, one. companion. It's Dave who's supporting, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So. Oh, hello. Don't go home, don't go home, so just keep We going. have now been walking non-stop for 12 hours. Fantastic! And have we done 60? Keep going! You've been going 60? longer than 12 hours. Have we? Yeah, you started yesterday morning. Oh, 24 hours! 24! Exactly. My mind has gone, it's addled my brain! <laughs> you. Some people can only tolerate their parents for short periods of time. Uh, I'm not one of them. I love, I love my mum. It's all good. We're still, we're still talking after uh, 19 hours and 55 minutes. 24. Oh no, I can't. I'm 23 hours and 55 minutes. I don't even right. know how long I've been walking for. Yeah, your mum thought it was 12. <laughs> and this, I don't know how <laughs> that's... I would have thought, if you thought it was 48, I'd understand. <laughs> did, she, did she say the same thing? That she's I still happy she with me? Oh. No, no. Did you, did you say that... I didn't have to. This is like reality TV, isn't it? <laughs> They're getting updates from the family on Richard's progress. Fingers crossed. It's yeah. all going to be fine. Yeah, he wants to walk at his own pace. So yeah. we're um, walking at yeah. our own pace. We're walking yeah. at our own pace. And we, we, know, we know he's safe behind us with, our, with our, uh, my other daughter. For years, Pam Manning was clear she wouldn't right. do 100. So then I thought, well, why not? If I don't do it now, I thought I might be too old. But you have you been know? busy doing something else. Oh, I'm always doing something else. So you are walking pretty much all the time. If yeah. you look on Facebook. Yeah. But you've done all of the national trails. Yes, all 19. Yeah. Yeah. Keep coming. Yeah. I mean, I'm struggling at the moment because my sciaticus kicks in. Um, so I've borrowed poles. Oh. So I'm not walking like I should be, but... It ain't going to beat me. <laughs> As a regional group chair on her first hundred, Terry Brown has a fan club. So they've got to turn out for you, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, they have. Yeah. I'd like a round of applause. <laughs> You'll get one. <laughs> How's it going, Jim? Oh, I've had a bit of a lean, but apart from that... Of course, you're walking with Jill, Jill Green, who's also yes. 81. Yes. Significant one for Jill. Yes. Yeah. She deserves it. D -d Doing her thirtieth. Yeah. You look after each other, basically. Yes. Yeah. And you got your two companions from last year as well. Yes. Well. They're lovely. And they look after us as well. Yeah. Jill Green. <laughs> How long have you been doing hundreds? Well, I started in 1985. So they're not all consecutive. And that's because you've been... Doing well, other things. Doing other walking. What yeah. kind of other walking have you done? I used to do race walking when I was younger. And so you used to do 100 miles in what speed? Well, <laughs> various different speeds. The fastest ever was 21 hours 15 minutes in Australia. Wow. And then 21 hours 17 minutes in New Zealand. 
been so lucky. Yeah. And um, uh, how does the LDWA hundred compare to those kind of hundreds? They're very different creatures. Oh, completely different. This is when I enjoyed those, but this is fantastic. It's the camaraderie with the people. I mean, we've got Debbie and Heidi staying with us. They're faster than us. They could leave us, but they choose to walk with us, which is lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Last year, Jim and Jill finished leaning badly in pain. So you weren't Everything shocked. was hurting, yes. <laughs> they propped each other up as they walked. It's just our bodies weren't designed to last this long and still be doing this. That's the trouble. When you're 81. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> so you've really got to tell your body to pack up complaining and keep on. <laughs> Hilary, we've seen your crochet fifties for the fiftieth hundred. That's not the only way you've celebrated the golden. Absolutely not, Simon. We have to have the golden fingernails. <laughs> Gold finger. <laughs> Got Kenilworth Castle just over there. Yes. Yeah, have you ever seen it before? Uh, many times, yes. A weary Richard Hicks has made it to his hometown. I'm impressed. I didn't think I was going to have to do any walking. I thought we were going to get to work and he'd quit, so... Slow progress, but when I get to Kenilworth, I will have done 100k anyway. So I may not do the 100 miles, but well, 100k... Sally, Sally and Jen are um, of the view that you are going to continue. Um, I don't know that I'm... <laughs> I, don't know that, I don't know that I'm going to... I'm going to assess the options. Um, at uh, the croquet club. So you want the snacks or like? Yeah, the checkpoint. Oh, yeah. Richard made the pragmatic oh, decision. Say, but it's open until quarter to five, so there is an incentive just to stay there eating through the menu, isn't it? <laughs> at the breakfast checkpoint, welcome foot care from Tara and Chris of Challenge First Aid. It definitely feels a bit hard, it's probably why it's bothering you. Yeah. Do you want me to take this bottom bit? If it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have a blister that's already formed, yes. um, try that's not to put a compede on them. No. Oh, because um, <laughs> it's all right, you've done it now, we're going to leave them there. Just leave it. Are you having a bit of first aid? No, I just wash my feet. Oh. It's most lovely. I just wash so, them in. I'm doing the same. That, that, that is nice. fine, right. yes. We're I've got a blister, everything. but you know. We share everything. I even use the water after she's finished with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For Pam Manning, an emotional hug with friend and checkpoint coordinator, Mary Deitch. I just broke down in tears because of my sciatica. <laughs> oh, Pam, come on. Okay. Yeah. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Because I so want to do this on and I'm not gonna let it beat me. It just happened so much. Yeah, no, that, I was fine second, walking yeah. through the dark. Yeah. That wasn't a problem. Wasn't, no, no. It's just it was great. Sciatica. It's just my sciatica kicked yeah. in. And yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just took me down there and I need to try and get back up there. Yeah. It'd be good to try something though, Pam. Pam hadn't realized there were first aiders. Mary took her along. Heidi and Debbie, you walk with Jill and Jim. Yes, yes, we have the pleasure to work, walk with the legends that are Jill and Jim. Do you, think, do you feel it's a bit of a privilege? Oh, definitely, definitely. And I think uh, Jill's hoping to hit a big number this year, so that's going to be even more special at the end. Yeah, 30th, when she completes it. Well, yeah, so I feel it's a privilege to see them a bit on yes. the route, and you see the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, and they just, they're just amazing, they just aren't they? They just go on and on and on, they're like Duracell batteries. Yeah. They just carry on. Walking, not talking. Oh, both. You know, oh, both. <laughs> and they never complain. No. Do they? No. no. Does that mean you're not allowed to complain either? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> While Sally and Jen were enjoying their foot care, leading runner Lisa Walbridge was 31 miles ahead and approaching the final checkpoint, having left husband Jared behind. Interviewer David Morgan caught up with her. Just. It's running conditions we like to say that. Yeah, it's been great, really good. Hardly any mud. Lots of canal. Lots of canal. Do you reckon it's helped your time today? I think so. It hasn't helped Jared though. How far was behind? Dave Wakelin. I don't know. <laughs> Not far behind is Victoria Morris, who in 2022 won the Montaigne Spine Challenger North, a race of 160 miles on the Pennine Way in winter. I'm not really interested in no? time other than um, 
definitely not going into a second night um, because I don't think I'd cope very well with that. But how has the conditions been underfoot for you? Horrible! It's been so dry um, and I'm used to bogs. Um, so my feet are very sore, but I'm trying to ignore them. Mo Herbert has fought hard to be here after nearly dying of COVID. Ended up five ambulances in a week, um, two trips to hospital, and then a week in hospital um, on the COVID ward. Um, and then that left me with long COVID, problems with bladder going on strike. Mo jokingly asked a friend to write his eulogy. Then his kidneys failed. It was uh, probably about half day, three quarters a day before they find decided to start. But during that time, I was um, in my hospital bed thinking, do you know what, I think I've come to the end of the road. And uh, I remember thinking, I hope, I hope Mark remembers he's doing my eulogy. And then I thought, he can't, no one will come to my funeral. I'll be buried by men in white suits in a rubbishy pine coffin. Well, Mo, I, I, I don't know what to say to that story. The fact that you're here on this 100, you're less than a mile now from the last checkpoint. It's inspiring. It's inspiring Thanks, to me, Dave. and, and I, I'm, I've moved me, that has. Jared Walbridge desperately wants to finish in under 24 hours after past near misses. It'll be tight. I'm always to the point of crying each time I think about the possibility of going under 24. Yeah. But yeah, oh, even if I don't, I mean, it's, it's not going to be a problem. Yeah. At least I know I've pushed myself. I definitely couldn't push myself harder. Jared would meet his target with 14 minutes to spare. Wife Lisa had already finished in 22 hours and 19 minutes. That's just one minute less than it took David Rosen to become the very first finisher of an LDWA 100 50 years earlier. Their regular 100s companion David Wakeling was now running with a dodgy knee. Struggling a bit. <laughs> he too would beat 24 hours by four minutes. Back in Coventry, on a surprisingly green route into the city, all the tears of earlier are forgotten for first-timer Pam Manning. Pam, this is an amazing transformation. <laughs> Was it the first aid people? No, I didn't get there in the end. I'm all right once I'm going again. It's when I stop. Yeah. yeah. So um, as long as I've got my poles. Well, yeah. don't stop then. No. You better carry on. <laughs> See ya. Coventry's War Memorial Park is a reminder that walkers are entering a city that was ravaged by Hitler's bombs. Quite incredible memorial. Yeah. Well, Coventry, you know, yeah. they Rich. really suffered. Don't you do? Yeah. Jill Green and her posse are now 70 miles in. In the night, you pass through the village of Snitterfield, just yes. after Stratford. Yes, and you we... you got a friend there, so what happened? Well, we, we were walking along in the night, not making a noise. We, we could hear a radio on, so we thought some lads were just having a party in the field. I believe it's a campsite. And when we appeared, he, he put, we can walk 500 miles on. And they were all singing along to it, <laughs> just, just as we went by, two o'clock-ish or something, you know. We had a little dance along. <laughs> it's rare for an LDWA 100 to venture into a city centre, but Coventry's historic buildings have provided unexpected interest for many walkers, especially the stark shell of the city's bombed-out cathedral and its spectacular successor. After the Coventry checkpoint, walkers would quickly leave the city and head across fields and along the canal into Birmingham, where Max Cole had already arrived at the final checkpoint. Hi, thank you. Thanks to the trackers carried by all walkers, he got a personalised welcome. Max had walked with his father, Roger, on his 41st and final successful hundred. And he decided to come back in a special year. We'd better do another one. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? The 50th one. The 50th one is a good yeah. one to do, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and now we're down the River Colt. <laughs> 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 we are in, in now. <laughs> well, thanks very much, guys. Yeah, all the best. Thank you. Bye-bye, Max. Bye-bye.
Max finished his 700 in 27 hours and 7 minutes. 11 miles behind is Julia Warman, walking with husband Ralph. She's making good progress in her attempt to achieve her first completion since losing part of her lung to cancer. Still going. Yeah. You're doing yeah. well. And you did think you would, didn't you? No, no. What have you been battling with? Battling with so, uh, blisters. I think because of the terrain's so hard, it's dried out. It is like walking on concrete most of the time. And the things that brought you down last year, those haven't been a worry at all. No, I mean, there has been quite a bit of climbing, but uh, because it's been a year after, another year after my operation, my lungs are uh, a lot stronger now, even though they're not, uh, not got full capacity. And there's been, the, the climbs today have been short and steady and got up them quite quickly. We'll do the job today and we'll put this one to bed. And, I'm, and it'll be my 10th one and I'll be extremely pleased and, and I'm pleased for Julia as well because it will be her first completion since uh, um, her cancer. You supported each other through that and we're, now through this. We're a team, we're, yeah. a team. We're, we're a team with everything that we do. <laughs> um, and the LDWA has, um, has been our life. Um, it's been my life for the last 40 odd years and, uh, and Julia as well. Yeah, a uh, life and a lifeline. Yeah, it has, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Hang on a second. Go. You've got assistance. Yes. How has this happened? Uh, just for the last mile, that's all. She's just joined us for the last mile to walk into the checkpoint with us. So someone in Hampton in, Gard in Arden no longer owns a dog, you, you saw it? <laughs> like Ralph Warman, James McHugh is on track for an award. That'd be made up and be bad, yeah. Yeah, which is for? 10, 10 mile hundreds. Yeah, and how many have you tried? 10. My You're first. Your first? Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, that's, it. that's a bit more special than 10, really. <laughs> <laughs> Ten's easy. <laughs> Peace out, cheers. Aaron Hookway is also on his 10th. Yeah, it's a special one, this one. I've been having a bit of party on Ray Round. It's looking, <laughs> looking like a bit of a personal best as well. So oh, wow. It's been a, uh, been a good, uh, it's been a good, it's been a good route. It's been all right. When you say it's been a bit of a party all the way round, uh, yeah, what, been what, what does that look like? I've been going to check points and having a bit of a singer song and... Uh, <laughs> Phil Clark of Shropshire is beginning to experience the lean that afflicts many walkers as the miles clock up. I've never had a lean before, never been told I'm, I've been leaning, uh, but I felt, I felt that I was drifting to the right. Phil's done tougher events than this. The spine race, yes. It seems aptly named for you. Right? Yeah, at the moment, probably, <laughs> yes. And yes. Um, when you did the spine, which is what, how far is it? 268 miles, miles yes. in a week. Yes. Uh, that's a heck of a long way. That is 40 miles a day in winter over rocks and fells. Yes. Did you lean? No. No. It's uh -huh. incredible. Yeah. And that was last year you finished it, Yes, wasn't it? 2022 and 2018, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. it must be quite a surprise. Uh, yeah, although I just see I don't feel as though I'm leaning. It's funny, isn't it? Strange. Phil's soon at the Cornwall and Devon Group's checkpoint at Barston, run by the renowned Hazel Baum, in her 36th year as a hundreds volunteer. So where are you from? Marches. Oh, right, yes. That's not far from us either. Just up the road and around the corner of the group's checkpoint is like an annual homecoming for Warren Yabsley. It's great because I live in Leeds, so I never hear any West Country accent. So going in there brings back so many memories and everyone's so uh, helpful and friendly. And uh, one of the participants in the Cornwall and Devon group, his mother taught me at primary school uh, as well. So his family connections there as well. Who's that? Uh, Ken Gross. We saw Ken earlier on. He and Warren both get round. A little way back at desperately pretty Burkeswell, Parish priest Mark Bratton is impressed by the procession of hundred ears. One of them tried to come up my rectory pathway, having got somewhat lost, but I was able to put him right. Um, 
Uh, he didn't want a, a break of any sort. He was, uh, he was uh, getting on his way. On. Yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, they were looking serious. <laughs> Jen Hicks and Mum Sally have kept going. We've like had a few moments of kind of feeling a little bit low, and we'll see. I think I feel like the sun's out now. Like it's getting looking good. Sally and Jen will make it all the way to the finish and onto the cover of Strider magazine. Pam Manning has been walking with Jan Barker and John Phillips, checkpointers on the Marshalls event, ever since Stratford. You're still going strong? We are. Yeah. Well, ish. <laughs> yep. We're trying. Yep. We get there slowly but surely. Yep. Yes. A few more plasters. Oh, thunder. Yeah, it's beautiful, oh. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You are inclined. To uh, the right. I uh, guess. A, a little to the right. Yeah, I've always been a little bit right leading. <laughs> Northumbria's Peter Ford has relished the West Midlands views. Just stunning, and the weather, of course, made it superb. Some, so, some uh, people have found um, they don't really care what it looks like. It's hot and hard. Yeah. Um, yes, hard but, heat, you know, we've done hundreds before in, in severe heat, Kent and Dorset, uh, in particular Spring to Mind, and, you know, going way back to Wessex Age and with the, uh, the flint in the field really wrecked my feet. Um, so we've had those sort of tough conditions in the past. That's what hundreds are about, the challenges, and, you know, you embrace it. I'm also going back to work on Tuesday. Jill Green is still smiling. You've gathered someone in? Well, no, Terry's just walking with us, which is yeah. nice. <laughs> Hello, Hi, Simon. Jim. Good? Yeah. How many people get to do their first hundred with, you know, a couple of legends well, of the Well, there we are. There we are. I am a lucky lady. Yeah. I didn't decide to do it till about February time, so it's all come as a bit of a shock, really, and I still can't believe I'm here. It's all very surreal. Jim is now suffering badly with back pain, but the two 81-year-olds plod onward, knowing they still have a full night of walking ahead of them. Ralph and Julia Warman now know they'll be spared from having to do much more night walking, with a couple of hours to sunset and nine miles still to go, Matt Parker's camera found them leaving the Solihull checkpoint behind and resuming the long canal walk into Birmingham. Up ahead, Daniel Clark and Mike Hoskin are unaware they're about to see Roger Osgood match a record that stood for 31 years. See that man on the left? Do you know anything about him? I feel like you're going to tell me. I'm 81 and I've equaled the... Uh, Record. Oh yeah, a record for I, the oldest. For the oldest. Well, yes, it, it's equal with Henry Bridge. Henry Bridge. Yes, yeah, he was eighty-one. And fantastic walker. Fantastic walker, but not as good as you. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, you're going to finish in daylight. I mean, that is absolutely incredible. Last year, what time did you do? Well, last year I was seven o'clock in. No. Was yeah. it seven or eight o'clock in the morning? Yeah, you finished in daylight in 46 the next hours. Day, yeah. Could you have imagined this? Um, not really, no. How has it happened? Not after last year. No. How uh, has it happened? I think it was the, the route description was extremely good. As ever, Roger downplays his achievement. I think, Henry, when you think back he didn't have all this technology did he You're impressed now aren't you very impressed <laughs> <laughs> has it been a straightforward hundred no nasty moments no no it has been straightforward yeah although i did see you nearly fall off a bridge you <laughs> got that on camera that was well that was especially for the camera <laughs> the show <laughs> mike did you have any idea you were about to witness 100 history? No. Yeah, well. I, but I think anyone who finishes this is amazing. Well, but, yeah. But, you know, I mean. That's a great thing to say. If he's breaking, he's uh, breaking a record or all that. Yeah. Even better. Less than a mile ahead, finishers are reaching HQ in a steady stream and being applauded by their peers, including some receiving milestone awards, like Phil Champion getting his badge for 20 completions. It's touch and go whether Roger will get back inside 35 hours, an unheard of achievement for someone his age. 
Roger's expecting the usual applause. He has no idea the audience has been primed. Are we all ready for this big moment? Only five octogenarians have ever completed an LDWA 100. Roger's the fastest, by nearly six hours. More finishes, more applause. Are you happy? I'm happy. <laughs> Enjoy the moment. Yeah. Well done, Dave, when you first. Thanks very much, yeah. We'll do this all together. We start together, we finish together. Yeah. Good. Well done. The pleasure of this moment is reason enough for most people to do 100. Andrew Underdown has another reason. It's brilliant. I did my first hundred for my 60th to show the kids there was still a bit of life in the old dog yet. And, uh, and then I've done them every year that they ran. So it's uh, 10 up in my 70th year. Just after 10 p.m., two very special finishers come into view. How does it feel? Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> you might cry in a minute, actually. Yeah, yeah. S s see if you can hold out for a minute. I know, but yeah, just really please, Simon. Yeah. Because we've done it together and we've done right, quite yeah. a good time yeah. for us. I'm not, I'm not... You're leaning a lot, oh, Ralph. I am, I'm, yeah, yeah, I am. It's gone now. Yeah, I can feel it in my back. I can feel my back's not right. How long has it been uncomfortable? Uh, oh, about an hour and a half. Really oh. comfortable, yeah. I, I, thought I noticed it. Yeah. We didn't Did you? notice it, other people noticed it. I didn't notice it. As, as Coventry. They've taken just over 36 hours. Well done, both of you. Well done, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. LDWA Vice Chair, Karen Pickersgill. These people are special to you? They are incredibly yeah. special, yes, yes. You know the backstory. I do, yeah. yeah. I'm incredibly yeah, yeah. proud of Julie. She's done amazingly well. Yeah, yeah. This is another 10 presentation for a Yorkshire person, so it's special. How long has it taken you to do it? Uh, 44 years. 44 years! <laughs> there are plenty of walkers still out there. Among them, Len Fallick on his 41st hundred. For him and others, it'll be a long night.